Is Noah's Ark a myth? Hello, everyone. This is Ty Green. Is Noah's Ark a myth? I know that it isn't, and I believe that most of you watching this know that it isn't either. We assume that everyone knows the story, and more importantly, why it happens. It's so important that Jesus reminds us that it's going to be just like the days of Noah when he comes back, Matthew 24 and 37. We often share the experience of Noah and the great flood to children, but the story has been changed by some and the impact is on our children and the new believers to the faith. You ever heard of Noah's Ark? No? Well, let me tell you. There was this person named Noah and he had a big family and he lived at a time. This is just a story. It's like a myth. It's certainly not a myth. It's not a fable and we should never teach it as so or water it down or we will miss the whole point. There's a penalty for sin and there is also salvation and restoration. He lived at a time when people all around his family were doing mean things. Mean, mean things. And so God was mad at all the mean things. So, I didn't really think that God had a sense of outrage, but apparently she does. I know y'all noticed the type of flag they have. That's a flag that is rebellious to the rainbow of the Bible. And it is a representation against what the Bible teaches against same sex and sexual immorality, which points to why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. But did you notice that she said, God was a she. And folks laugh and go along with it. Perhaps they really don't know any better. But those children definitely don't know better. This is why we need to know the word of God and teach it to our children. Moreover, we need to know what's being taught to our children in church. We can no longer assume that they're being taught the word of God. This is the case in point right here. God is a he, and he is always referred to in the masculine within the Bible. Deuteronomy 3 and 22, you shall not fear them for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Psalms chapter 66, let's pick it up at verse 5, come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Salah. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. These are just a few examples. So, in a fit of rage, God said, Noah. There was no fit of rage. The Lord is patient with us, slow to anger. Look at this word right here. It's very important. The word long suffering. God does get angry, but he's slow to get there collectively and individually. He's patient with us. Look at this. The word long suffering. Strong's Concordance H750, the word arek in the Hebrew. The Strong's definition say long, long suffering, patient, slow to anger. In the BDB lexicon, we see the word long, pinions, and then we see patient, slow to anger. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, 
Psalms 86 and 15, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. In the New Testament, we see 2 Peter 3 and 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See that? I'm going to cause a big flood and we're going to get rid of everything and start over again. But I want you to build a very, very, very big boat, an ark. And in that ark, you are going to put two of every animal. And the waters began to come down and it rained and rained and rained and rained. And you know, here's the thing. When God saw all of that mess. All of those beautiful things and people that had been destroyed by the water, well, God kind of rejects, what's the word I'm looking for? Regret. Regret. There's the word. God regretted that. And so God said to Noah and his family, I'm never going to do that again. Even when people do bad things, I'm going to find a way to love them anyway. And you know how you can tell that I'm never going to do that again? I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. And every time you see that rainbow, you'll know I'll never do that bad thing again. I'll love you always. That's why I love rainbows. That's one of the reasons. Where within scripture does it say that God regretted the flood? That's not scriptural. God has a track record for destroying wickedness. He's done it before and he will do it again. But he also has a track record of redemption, salvation and restoration. So be careful when we hear the twisting of the word of God. Here's a bit about the rain and the bow and why it all happened apart from the fallen as the root of it was wickedness. We will get into the gene pool issue in another video. This rainbow in the sky is the original. Basically, it has seven colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet, right? This bow is associated with rain. That's why it's called a rain bow. Remember this? Genesis chapter 7, verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. The question is, why did it rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights? Take a look at this and then we will get into the bow because that bow belongs to someone. Now, here's why it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Genesis chapter six, verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Do you see that? Something grieved the Lord at his heart. Now that's heavy when something grieves us at our heart, right? But what specifically grieved the Lord at his heart? The wickedness of man. And it was great. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually sin has a penalty of death right so we can guess what happens next it's always the same two things throughout scripture the judgment of the death penalty or receiving the gift of god salvation now let's go to verse 7 and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, 
for it repenteth me that I have made them. There's that death penalty due to sin and wickedness. That's an outright rebellion against God. In this account, we see salvation. We see deliverance from this particular death penalty gifted to Noah and his family. Verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we know about the ark, the animals, the rain, and the flood. Oh, and uh, who shut that door on the ark? The Lord. Genesis 7, 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. Now, the rain accumulated into the flood. Then look what happens afterwards. The bow. The rain, then the bow. But that bow belongs to someone. The bow belongs to God. Genesis chapter 9, verse 12. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. See that? God says it is his bow. Verse 14, And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And there's that brief within scripture. The rain is an important part of the rain bow. It reminds us of why the rain came and the part that it played in it. For it had never rained upon the earth beforehand. Genesis 2 verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So the original rainbow means something, right? But folks forget about the rain. Folks forget that the bow belongs to God. He said, it is my bow. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us up on that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this. Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful 
and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.